Welcome to Sawdust and Cornbread. In today's video, I'm going to show you a super simple, no cost, wall mounted coat rack. Because sometimes you need a place to hang your hat or your ears. The first thing you need for this project is an old piece of wood, preferably a board in any condition. I found this one in my basement and don't tell anybody, but I had already painted some messy stuff on the back for another project. Nobody will ever know. So just grab a board of any size and if you don't have one, I guarantee you, you have a friend or a family member that has a scrap piece of wood they wanna get rid of. My particular board is about 10 inches this way and 36 inches that way but you can really make it any size that you would like. This is just the board I had that fits the spot that I wanted. So you start with a board and it can be in any condition. It can be beat up. Um, in my case, I'm doing it farmhouse, kind of shabby chic. So the more beat up, the better. As a matter of fact, I took a hammer and several other blunt objects to this. I just whacked it and went away and made all of these neat little marks to give it character to look like it's had a harder life than it actually has. And I think that adds a lot of character. The next thing you need is some leftover paint in whatever color that you desire your coat rack to be. Now remember, your first coat that you put on is the color that's going to show through the crackling that we're going to put on it, the crackled paint mixture. So thinking about your board, you can leave it plain wood just as you find it, which is what I did because mine's already an aged dark color, or you can paint the entire board in a solid color that you want to show through the crackle. So going back to the crackle, you need scrap paint or leftover paint. And if you don't have some, I guarantee you a friend or neighbor does. It doesn't take that much. Um, for my size board, it's 10 by 36 inches. Probably, geez, maybe half a cup of paint will do it. And then some glue. It can be wood glue, it can be school glue, it cannot be hot glue, but any kind of runny glue. The process for creating the crackle is very simple. Although you can check out this video for a thorough explanation of how to crackle any substrate. For our purposes, I'll go over the basic idea. You simply paint on a thin layer of glue after you have your foundation color. Then you wait till that glue dries to just a little bit tacky state. Next, you apply a thin layer of your color that you want crackled on top of the base coat using single strokes. Try not to overlap too much or it'll mess the project up. Next, you brush that color out, make it smooth, and then you can either watch it dry for an hour or two or use your blow dryer to see cracks and fissures appear before your very eyes. Once I finished the crackle finish on the entire front surface of my board, it was time to figure out what kind of hardware I wanted to use as hooks. Now you can use just about anything for the hooks. It needs to be something that can screw into the board and that will protrude out from the board far enough that you can hang something on it. It could be something as simple as a fancy nail or even a plain nail or screw or a cup hook. Or if you want to be fancier, you could use doorknobs if you want something big and chunky or you could use rope hooks. In my case, I used these little they were plain bronze looking round door pulls that I had down in storage with my, my hoarded hardware that I've taken off of things that, I've, that were broken or, or I've taken apart. And then I did that same method of crackle paint using half glue, half paint, glow drying it on the front surface of these with the same finish. And then attaching them is very easy. So I'm gonna screw that in until you see it come out the other side. Should see it pop out any minute here. There it is. Now it's all the way through. I'm gonna take my thumb and hold it on this screw head. So here's the screw coming through. And then I'm gonna use my little knob here, my Dura pull, line it up on the screw. I'm gonna turn it clockwise and I'm just gonna spin it. I still have my thumb on the back. Keep on spinning it till it's hand tight. And that's all there is to it. You do the same thing with all the other pulls. Once I had all of my door pulls on as my coat hooks, 
I felt like it still lacked something. It just needed an extra touch. So I went again downstairs to my hoard of, or my stash of old broken hardware and hardware that I've redeemed from other things that I've upcycled. And I found this really neat round antique. It was um, brass, I believe, before I painted it, door pull. And it's a hinged door pull. It adds a lot of character. So I went ahead and I did the same treatment with the glue and the paint to give it a crackled effect. And I think it was just the touch that this project needed. To attach the coat hook to the wall, you could use those tooth saw hooks like you tap onto the back of the picture frame. And I did consider that, but I didn't like the way it, it kind of wobbled out from the wall. I wanted something to be flush. And also I started thinking about all the coats and scarves and heavy things that would be on there in the winter. Wasn't sure if those sawtooth hooks would hold. So what I actually ended up doing was getting some really long wood screws and driving those directly into a stud on each side of the shelf. That way it's flush, it's snug against the wall, and I know it's gonna hold everything. I hope you enjoyed today's project. Be sure to join me next week for another exciting DIY here on YouTube. And also be sure to click the link to the Sawdust and Cornbread blog. I post on there several times a week. There's all kinds of interesting, cost-effective projects. I have different sections. We have make it, fix it, improve it, uh, magical DIY. Those are all Disney-inspired props and home improvement projects, as well as life inspiration. They're stories from my life to inspire you. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next week. Were you able to spot all of the hidden Mickeys and Disney Easter eggs in today's video? Here's a quick recap of where they were all hidden. Also, be sure to check in the notes area below the video to see all the Easter eggs in this week's Sawdust and Cornbread blog. Thanks for joining us!